Quite simply, lock and key is the horror version of Lost in Space, which is a really good show. I don't know if everyone loves it because no one seems to be talking about Lost in Space, but I sure enjoy it, and I really enjoyed Lock and Key. I mean, in terms of similarities, we're talking down to the family with a little boy driving the action, surprisingly high stakes, and lots of danger. A lot of people die on this show, right? One little one was a little boy who died, like right in front of like right in front of us. I that was that was the one I found the most shocking. But you know how else it's like lost in space? Incredible production values. Thank you for spending the money, Netflix. Uh, the only notable difference between the two is that, well, well, besides, of course, you know, sci-fi versus horror, is that while Lost in Space is very female-centric, which I don't think that show gets enough credit for, Lock and Key is more balanced, both in terms of gender and ethnicity. There's even a key, though, that can make you switch genders, which is very interesting and very well used and very well done, like this whole show. In fact, my only complaint is the look of the show. It's very bright and safe. Lost in Space feels like a sci-fi show, but Lock and Key does not, well, it's tough. It has a lot of horror elements, which I think are impressive, and I did think it had some scares, but it just doesn't have the look, the cinematography, the lighting of a horror show. And for that reason, I wasn't too excited to watch it, even though I had advanced screeners. Even that wasn't doing it for me because it seemed too kiddy to me. We've, some of, we've been discussing this on Twitter, right? That it seems more like Netflix is a series of unfortunate events, which I just could never get through. That, just seemed, that was, in my opinion, that skewed too little in terms of its audience appeal instead of all ages, like something like Lost in Space, right? But I'm delighted to tell you that this show, again, is more like Lost in Space. And as soon as I started it, actually, I was hooked. I liked it. I'd say maybe it took about 10, 15 minutes, and then I was like, this is pretty good. Uh, two episodes, really, to tell if you like it. And by the end of the second episode, I was like, so much better than I thought. And in fact, it gets particularly good for the second half. The back, the back five episodes, I binged those in 24 hours. I mean, Netflix is very good at this. They know how to end an episode right where you're like, must keep watching, right? Um, and this is why people like Netflix, why the binge model is popular. I mean, with, with lock and key, your weekend is taken care of. Believe me, you're going to have a good time. Or, or whenever you choose to watch it, you're in for a really good chunk of entertainment. Now, to me, the real star of the show is Jackson Robert Scott, which surprises me. He was adorable in It Chapter 1, but I wasn't so sure he was a good actor in It Chapter 2. In fact, I wasn't so sure he was a good actor for the first couple of episodes of this show. He's adorable, but again, I was like, can he act? He can. By the end of the show, he not only shows incredible range, I think, as an actor, I think he has a lot of potential going forward, too. But he's really the heart of Lock and Key. Loved Bodhi. I mean, that's kind of, I think, the idea with the character from the comic, but Jackson Robert Scott really delivers. Not to say the rest of the Lock family isn't fantastic. They are. Tyler, Kinsey, and Mom Ellie are all excellent, also very likable, but also smart, interesting characters, each with their own issues. I particularly like what happens with Kinsey. I thought that was very cool. Although Tyler and Ellie really pull on the old heartstrings, that's for sure. And all of those issues are explored, I think, extremely well. That's the beauty of like the of the streaming series model as well, that you have the time to develop all these characters and go there as this show does. Uh, but for as for other standout performances, something truly special, I would say there's Patrice Jones as horror fan Scott, who's also a real sweetheart. I was rooting for him. Uh, Thomas Mitchell Barnett, who's very convincing as a very disturbed teenager. Stephen Williams, who plays one of the nicest men I've ever seen on screen. I was like, what a nice guy. In fact, he's in Birds of Prey playing a real jerk. And I was like, he's not a jerk. He's a wonderful person. That, that was funny. That was a funny uh, 180 to see the actor do. He was believable in both roles. Good for him. But he was just so nice here. I was like, what a great guy. And of course, Laysla de Oliveira, who makes for a fabulous and truly dangerous villain. She was fantastic. Exactly what the show needs. Because, you know, she's really just one villain for most of it versus everyone else. And she can take on everyone. I think it was still very well balanced. She was great. 
I also have to hand it to the production design team. Wow, the house and its surrounding property is a true character itself, with the hidden keys extremely well realized. I really like the keys. I wasn't sure about it. I wasn't sure about the opening credits, but as the show went on, I was like, I'm liking this. In fact, I think this could easily become a popular game. They could sell like replicas of the keys, I think, and maybe even have theme park attractions like the Stranger Things Horror Maze at Universal Studios if this show is a hit for Netflix. I see a lot of potential here, really good stuff. And the whole Lock Estate, uh, including the sea caves, ooh, the sea caves. You would think you would read that in a script and be like, I can't afford this on a, on a small screen. Well, Netflix can and does do it. The school, the town, Everything is so incredibly well realized that Lock and Key often feels like a feature film instead of a TV show, like Lost in Space, quite frankly. Uh, and of course, I have to give a shout out to the VFX team. For a number of episodes, they were like, at the beginning, they had this little screen come up and they're like, the VFX isn't completed, you know, please keep that in mind. And I was like, looks pretty darn good to me. I mean, maybe on a few of the, uh, well, let's just say ghost animations. I was like, oh, that may be a little off, but I would have accepted it. Like if that's as good as it got, I think it would be fine. So I'm curious to see how it actually looks when they release the show. Um, but they make all these fantastic ideas and terrifying ideas totally believable. But I have to say there are a number of twists that are conveyed simply through acting. And I think that the cast deserves a lot of credit for their impressive work in selling those twists. Very good. The ending, wow, never saw it coming. Totally different from the comic book too. So everyone is in for a surprise. Don't ruin it. Uh, finally, the show's writing team deserves a shout out as well, led by showrunners Carlton Coos, who works quite a bit in Hollywood, and also Meredith Averill. They deserve a ton of credit. They're the leaders of the writing team, but the show has a lot of writers. But everyone, wow. They craft such an ornate world, but at the same time, they make it totally believable and organic. I mean, they make the most out of like about the, each, each episode's about 45 minutes, so it's not exactly 10 hours, but they make the most of the time. I mean, so much happens in those 10 episodes. You have a ton of world building, a ton of character development, action, fantasy, scares, genuine mysteries, all leading up to one big mystery. Oh, it was great. It really feels like you're reading a great book or comic book. And on that note, to be fair, I've only read a few issues of Lock and Key. But you know what? It, the comic never really appealed to me. I didn't want to go beyond those few issues. But from what I remember from what I read and from what I've been able to see online researching the, the comic for this show, I would say that this show honors the comic, but quite frankly, I think also improves upon it. This is one of those cases where I think Hollywood actually made something better. I know, I can't believe it. <laughs> really, surprise upon surprise upon surprise. And also, delight upon delight upon delight. It's not only, I think it's not just a horror show, but it has a Willy Wonka-esque feel to it too. There's really a sense of wonder. It was great. So yes, as you can tell, I really enjoyed Lock and Key. And if you also like me, like Lost in Space, I think you're also gonna really enjoy this show. But even if you don't like Lost in Space, I think you should give this a try. Uh, as I said, you'll know within two episodes, after the, after the end of the first two episodes, if you're like, I could stop watching, well then go ahead. But I don't think that's gonna be the case. All right, so share your thoughts down below. I'd be very curious to know your watching experiences. I'd be curious to know what episode you get hooked or if you don't get hooked. Let's, I mean, you know, again, just like Lost in Space, it's for every, not for everyone. This might not be as well, but I like it a lot. So share those thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.